welcome to Florida Fishy Finger, my YouTube channel where I talk about all kinds of boats that I'm into, mostly micro skiffs and polling skiffs, fishing boats. I also bring you along with us on our fishing adventures to go get fat snook and mangroves or a really nice kingfish off the beach. We like to go on micro skiff adventures, fish offshore with them. So let's take a look today at a new boat for me. This will largely be a reaction video because I have never looked into this other than right before making this video where I brought up some browser tabs for us to walk through in the video. I have not looked into it. So this will be a reaction to the Nano 13 or what I see I think is called the Nano 13. Now what I'm looking for is a boat I can use off of the beach. This is part of a infinity sized series uh, to go through all the micro skiffs uh, in the world and we're starting closest to home where I'm at in Florida and there sure are a lot of great manufacturers of micro skiffs in this area. There may be excellent ones where you are too and I'm interested in hearing about that so please leave in the comments your experience with either the Nanocraft or other micro skiffs. I love to get ideas and see what you're interested in and that helps me generate other uh, videos to show you what's going on. Okay, so let's look at the Nano 13. Go right to their website. Wow. That's pretty nice. Look at that under gunnel. Rod storage. I like that rod storage. It's attached to the side, it looks like, of the hull. That's a nice advantage. Looks like, oh, they've got some cork on the inside of that one. So it's just like you can do some nice customizing of this craft. I don't know if that's standard with the fuzz on the rod holders and everything, but that's pretty cool. It's a 14-foot boat, I think. No, sorry, 13-foot. Yeah, 13, hence Nano 13. All right, let's see. Now I clicked on the Nano 13 tab. Let's go down and look at it. Simplicity. Yeah, I love the simplicity of it. And actually, you know, the front of that bow looks like you've got a good amount of fishing space on the front. You see that guy standing up on the front? He's not a small guy. Kind of a medium-sized guy, so you get a picture. See the boat leans in as you put the fish in the water. That would be typical of a boat this size. You can't have any expectation other than that, in my opinion. And anything you would do to make it stable is also going to make it a backbreaker in the ride. You see that little V it's got in the hull? It's like it's got a couple of uh, interesting design features on the bottom. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, another thing I really like about this is look at the back, the transom, how it has that, that elevated, that rise. Uh, on flats boats like this size, I think that's a real good feature. And you see it on a number of different boats. Uh, Ancona does it on the one I have, the Shadowcast, and I love it. It helps backsplash too. So, you know, these boats really don't get a lot of water inside the hull, hopefully. And if they do, you have strong bilge, you get it right out. And that's what we uh, do on my boat, which is similar to this. Now, what I'm looking for is a boat that I can take off of the beach quite easily. And, you know, I doubt this is light enough to carry over the boardwalk, but let's see. Okay, so it says the boat weight is 240 pounds, and I am going to assume this is all composite. In other words, no wood in the construction. That's a thing for me, you know. <clears throat> May not be a thing for you, but Something I'm looking for, certainly, I don't know of any other way I'll get the size, the weight down on what I'm looking for, but this is obviously too heavy for my purpose. But this would be a fine fishing vessel, it looks like, for many other purposes. Oh, I can imagine the trouble I could get into on this thing. Wow, I wonder what its range is on a tank of gas. It says a maximum 15 horsepower, which I really think is enough I bet you it can go a long way with a 15 horsepower engine. I'm not sure how the gas tank is designed in or any of that stuff, but I'm sure they're more than willing to tell you every detail that your heart desires if you call them at their number. And uh, that's ah, it's cool. They give you some ah. Do they have no got? They have seafoam green. In other words, guide green, as coined by I believe Hell's Bay skiffs, which are also some fine skiffs. A uh, high fit and finish type quality vessel with the, those for sure. They are renowned around the world as the one of the top micro skiff producers. 
Fighting Lady Yellow, Castle Tan, Matterhorn White. I like all of those colors, to be honest. Of course, Seafoam Green would be my top pick. And you can go down to a 9 horsepower, which would be an interesting option. Go even more light. You know, to me, that has got some uh, attractive qualities to go very light. Especially in a boat this small. Uh, three and a half inches of draft. Now that is the lowest advertised draft that I've seen on any micro skiff so far reviewed in this series. That is beyond impressive claim, um, but it's not that hard to believe when you consider what a small looking boat this is. I don't have a hard time believing that claim at all. 13 foot length, yeah, it makes sense. You give up a little bit of length and you get a little bit of draft. So there's nowhere you're not going in this boat. 45 inch beam, that's about what I would expect. Pretty narrow, but par for this course. Yeah, the more shift you have, the more shift you have to fix. Yeah, that's so true, simplicity equals happiness. Um, I don't know the people at Nanocraft, but I already know I like the way they think because to me that is a foundation of everything I believe in terms of fishing. Simplicity, equals happiness. We manage complexity as much as we can. A boat like this uh, is indicative of a micro skiff in general and some of the qualities that you would want to look for, right? Uh, in any micro skiff, and there sure are so many choices. Now, I don't know how much this goes for, but uh, you know, you have to contact them, they'll tell you, but I'm guessing it's not that expensive. You can tell me in the comments. But the simplicity here is obvious, right? There is no steering wheel to break. There is no throttle cables to break. There are really no add-ons. No, a one thing I, I don't see that would be wonderful would be some kind of little elevation possibility, like a little platform or something, but I, I guess maybe it's almost too small to even do that. You see there's almost no space left behind the seat area to do that. So probably not possible, but maybe it is, I don't know. See if there's tricked out versions that you could do that, but really no no complexity at all to the point where I, you know you wonder where you put the rods when you're running, and I guess you put them back down underneath, and that you know that's fine too. Uh, I like to have a spot where I can put them where I'm just running around and going spot to spot to spot. Then I'm sure you just add them to the cooler up front, or you could just put on some aftermarkets quite easily. Yeah, you could actually put them right on that holding bar. Mount two of those. I have a good video on uh, looking at you know, mounting rod holders, but you want to get the good ones, the one that you know, look good but also function well. And, and there's uh, there's some things to watch out for there. But anyway, go ahead and subscribe to Florida Fishy Finger. That way you'll be notified if you click the notification bell, which you should do, of when new videos come out. Uh, I don't know how many videos I'll make in this particular series. Uh, really, the question is how many boats are there that fall into the micro skiff category on earth that's a number that is knowable but i don't know the number how much do you estimate this boat goes for i have absolutely no idea but i bet you it's between 500 and thirty-five thousand dollars. it's somewhere in that range it's probably down towards the lower range but no way to know until you call them so go ahead and use those links if you need to so, wow, the Nano 13 reaction video is that this is a fine looking vessel, which who wouldn't want to have something like this in their collection? Just the look of it alone draws you in as if a bug light to the bug, but in the difference would be that you are drawn into the best situation possible for, for a quick fishing trip. Dropping this sucker in the water is going to be fast like most other micro skips. So, hey, thanks for watching, Florida Fishy Finger. Why don't you go on out there and lip a fat daddy snook?